Okay, so in this video, we are going to consider a very important topic, which is the titration curve of amino acids. And for the titration curve, we are going to consider one amino acid, which is the simplest one, that is glycine. Now, if you look at the structure of glycine, it has got this CWOH, the NH2, the hydrogen as usual, and for the R group, it is replaced by a hydrogen atom. So, in glycine, the R group is basically a hydrogen. So, that is why it is the simplest amino acid of all the 20 amino acids. Now, we will consider an acid-base titration. So, what is an acid-base titration? You have this flask where you have where you have your acid and in this case it is glycine and from the top you add NaOH or any base dropwise to the acid. So when NaOH comes into the solution so you have a glycine solution and when NaOH comes into the solution it gets dissociated into Na plus and OH minus and as NaOH increases inside the solution this OH minus would increase as well as the Na plus but we are not go going to consider the Na plus we are only interested with the OH minus so this is going to increase and since this is going to increase OH minus would give rise to more pH that is the pH would rise in the uh, solution and that rise in pH would change the uh, change the properties of glycine. So we are going to see that by plotting a graph where the y-axis would be pH and the x-axis would be the OH minus equivalent that is the amount of OH that is uh, getting inside this solution. So starting off in the beginning when the OH minus is very less we have just started putting OH minus into the solution the pH would sort of increase slowly and as we keep on increasing the OH minus it is going to curve like this. So now if we trace the uh, trace the curve over here over here and over here and some traces so first the glycine would be in fully protonated form so by fully protonated I mean the the NH2 would be protonated as NH3 plus because that is the maximum number of hydrogen or protons that it can accommodate and the rest of the structure would remain as it is the CWOH we are saying fully protonated because this this part the amine part is NH3 plus as well as the CWOH is having the H with it it is not CWO minus it is protonated with a hydrogen. So this is the fully protonated form of glycine. Now as we move through the curve, as we keep on increasing the pH, that is as we keep on increasing this OH minus, gradually from the glycines, this H would be dissociated at H plus. So, it would be converted into this NH3 plus would remain the same, this H, this H, and it would be converted into CWO minus. Now, as we move through the curve, there would be one point in the middle, there would be one point in the middle where there would be equal amounts of this fully protonated form as well as this form that is CWO minus form. 
So let's say this is the position. So we have in this position, we have this form that is the CWOH, that is the fully protonated form, as well as the CWO minus this form. Now, as we keep on increasing the pH, as we keep on increasing the amount of NaOH and the OH minus increases, the curve would have a steep rise. And then it would flatten again. So what happened? So the, over here, it was equal amounts of this and equal amounts of this. Now, as we move along, this would be constantly getting transformed into this form. So this amount would reduce and this amount would increase. So there would be one point where none of the fully protonated form of the glycine would be present and only this form would be present. So that point would be somewhere over here. That is the midpoint of this of this steep. Now if we move further up, now there is no H plus to be donated from this CWOH. That is all the H plus have been donated to the solution. All the H plus are there in the solution from the CWO minus so from the CWOH. Now it needs to get more deprotonated. So it would now remove the H plus from NH3. So as we move up the steep, as we move up the curve, there would be this form that is where the CWO minus is present and NH3 plus is present. Now as we move, this would be slowly converted into NH2 and the CWO minus would remain as it is. Now from here, one H plus would get donated into the solution. So one less hydrogen, so it would be NH2 and this would be CWO minus as it is. Now moving up the curve, there would be another point. There would be another point somewhere over here where there would be equal amounts of this and equal amounts of this. Right? And if we keep on increasing the pH, if we keep on increasing the pH, so all of this would be converted into this form. So all the, all the amino acid, all the glycine, having the NH3 plus would donate their H plus from the NH3 plus and get converted into this NH2. So somewhere around, somewhere, somewhere around, uh, somewhere around the curve, it would be converted only into this form. So, in a nutshell, what we got, first, it was fully protonated. The structure was this, where it is having the H+, plus, where it is having the NH3+, plus and the CWOH. Next, when the pH got increased, it got slowly converted into structure where this CWOH lost all its hydrogen as H plus and got converted into CWO minus and eventually this got converted into NH2 and the CWO minus remained as it is. So, if you notice, the overall charge on this 
on this molecule is plus one because it is having only ns3 plus that is only one plus charge that is plus one charge now if you move on to this it has got one positive charge and one negative charge one positive charge from the ns3 plus and one negative charge from the c double o minus so this species has got neutral charge that is zero that is plus one and minus one so that ends up to be zero and for this species the final species it has got negative one because it is only having this c double o minus charge it is not having the plus charge on the nh3 or the nh2 so it is gradually moving from plus one towards zero that is neutral charge and this is again moving to minus one so when this is in this form where there is equal amount of positive and negative charge and the overall charge is zero so we call this form as a sweeter ion so sweeter ion is nothing but basically when the overall charge on a molecule is zero now if we get back to this curve over here uh, we said that this point over here this point on the curve this is the place where only this species is present only this species is present okay so this is the place this is the point where only these species is present which is actually the zwitterion it has got the positive charge the negative charge so the overall charge is zero and this is the zwitterion all the glycine the fully protonated glycines have been converted into zwitterion now if i extrapolate this point to the y axis and the ph where it hits this ph is called the isoelectric point or pi so this is called the iso electric point so isoelectric point is basically that ph where the overall charge on the amino acid is zero or the net charge is zero so that was all about the titration curve of glycine and how increasing the pH of glycine solution actually affects the charge distribution on various components on glycine. And we also learned about what is sweeter ion.